Now, as we were saying, we had to create a lot of the tools because the tools, there's certain tools that we need. You understand? In order to be um, co-laborers, in order to be workmen, and we put this up here as three, right? The principles, the process, and and basically knowing the process now is to actualize this, right? It's to actualize this, right? And there are certain tools that we also need in this process, right? And in, in the process and working out based on the principles. So what we'll put here. We was going to put tools, but really it will be related to actualize, right? That means basically, you know, to do it, you understand? And that connects with um, John 7 and uh, 17, you know, getting back to this key word right here, to know. You see, now belief, believe and belief is important. Belief and belief is, is important on a certain level if you would understand it rightly. You, you see you, you know what I'm saying? Um, but that is it's like you listen to somebody and you give them credibility. You know, like, like, like you uh, I trust, you know, trust, but then you try to verify. You see? So without verifying, that trust becomes weak. You see, when Christ was talking about the faith and, and, and it's translated sometimes belief, sometimes faith in the, in the Greek is uh, pistis or pistis, you know what I'm saying? In the, in the Hebrew, in, in the Hebrew, it's, it's, it's amen and, 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 and amen and mamen on that sort of level. But the root is that amen word, the word for faith. You know what I'm saying? We know that word and it has different forms to it. You understand know that that word faith or amen, um, it means to uh, accept this as truth, to to receive something as truth, and and to to trust in it, and to on on a, on a level of of words to have confidence, like you hear a lot in the media, um, how confidence is so important for the system present world system to run, people have to be confident in it. And even though people hear everything that they hear about New World Order and dollars and fiat currency, so on and so on, they still ha believe. You, you see, so they, they, they still have faith. They still trust it. They still have confidence. Even though they hear a lot of bad things, see a lot of worse things, so on and so on, they still think, hey, you know, people don't see the signs. They So they don't have trust or faith in the word, but part of that is because of ignorance and because of also bad conscience and guilty conscience. You know what I'm saying? Guilty with knowing. You see, guilty with knowing. And this is a, kind of like a part two to, the, to what we touched on vis-a-vis um, -vis the, 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 the point of conscience. You see, you see the point of conscience, which means with knowing. You know what I'm saying? In knowing something. You see what I'm saying? In knowing something. So it's interesting, you know, even just to think about that. But let's move forward now. Now with this, you know, uh, pretty much complete, um, the tools, of course, is education. Oh, this is what we want to mention um, with the discipleship. So these are some of the basics, all right, for um, discipleship. This is some of the basic um, teachings. Um, with discipleship, and this will be like what would be one of the first teachings, what we're about to touch on coming forward on discipleship. Um, and it's going to speak on the great invitation and to, and to, as they say, break that down, you understand, so we can understand what is said in um, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. And I will remind you um, to uh, check out, get a copy of the Majesty's speech where he speaks on that, on the Great Invitation. You know, I know we have it in one of one of the um, in some of the older and previous documents that we published. I don't see any right around at this present time, but we're working on the curriculum as well. And and this is education. You know, education is the key, but education. Is um is, is a challenging task, you know, so-called 
as a being a teacher or 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 an instructor and not just teaching anything but seeking to teach those things and those subject matters and on those subject matters that if the the student or in this case the disciples um go through learning the principles of it the process how how it works you know and how it works and then seek to do or actualize and also we could put we could have put here if we had more room realize too you know what I'm saying to realize something you, you know what I'm saying when like you learn the principles of, of of heaven the process how it moves and then as you look up and, and you study it you can actually see it and realize that what you read about is true because here it is. You understand? It is what it is. You recognize it you know, on, on, on that sort of level. And putting this all together, you understand, successfully will be called the makeba, what ones receive. Like Christ says, if if one can receive it, Revelation speaks in that language, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that has an ear, he, he who has a spiritual ear to hear that small, still voice. And, and so there are, you know, processes and procedures, you understand, that relate to um, how we approach the subject matter, the discipline, like when we talk about the composition notebooks, you understand, and to take notes, you over with in a discipleship um in a discipleship uh setting say if this was a school you understand and we wasn't in in this particular correspondence uh uh v log uh virtual classroom or v c r we wasn't in this present form but we were in um a actual um classroom or 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 lecture hall as it were um setting at the end of the semester or at a certain point of the course, all of one's study books would be reviewed. Not so much to, um, you know, critique what one's put down or what one doesn't put down as long as it's focusing on the subject matter, you know what I'm saying, but to help to guide the students and see who has been attentive to what because that one who, 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 who gets it, you understand, that one who was able to receive it maybe even previous, like, like Peter. Look at Peter for a moment in the Bible. Now, um, the disciples were like, uh, are like us. We're coming to Yeshua. We're coming to the Moshiach, having, having the stains of our humanness and having these, these flaws. But learning, you understand, learning his, his, the teaching and, and the principles and, and, and knowing Christ and knowing the Word. Remember, the Word we we didn't put we didn't put the word up here as far as the word you understand the word you know what I'm saying by the word the word we began off quoting um what was it um Psalm 119 and we touched on Psalm 119 in a previous um lecture 119 and 130 verse 130 hear this my brothers and sisters verse 130 says the entrance of thy words giveth light it giveth understanding or overstanding to the simple. Now, this is under the Hebrew letter that begins at verse 1 to 9, and it's called Peh, Peh. You understand? Now, this gets into some of the, the like we mentioned about Kabbalah. You know, when we talk about Kabbalah, some people think Kabbalah and, and Talmud is, is, is a particular book, but they are processes. They really come under this category of processes, you understand, because different principles, you see, different, there are certain spiritual principles, and, and they are so, um, I'm not going to say so many, but there are various relationships. The best way to do is, to, is really to get a good Bible and the ones that we recommend for discipleship, at least at the, at the one-on-one or the first level of discipleship, is a Schofield Reference Bible. And this is what we've, we've posted on the website, www.lojsociety.org. 
and one can download as a PDF and, and use it on, you know, their mobile, computer, or other type of um, electronic device if that's how they study it. But if they can, try to get a, 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 a hard copy, you know, of the book as well. It is very, very important, um, and it's the first Schofield. You know, saying the original, the original um, version that was out during the time of the of the visitation of the King of Kings, of the visitation of Kedus al Batach and Abu Kedus. You know, saying so it, we find certain works from that time, like Bullinger, Doctor Bullinger's work on on the witness um, of the stars, to also be very important because as we study it, we can see that certain things that happen in his time, 1892, 1893, that he was bearing witness to, and then when we recognize, wait, that's Lich Teferi, that's the son of man, that's, that's, that's what we call the birth of Rastafari, really Lich Teferi, at that particular time, he mentions 1896 too, I said, wait, 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 hold up, that was the Battle of Ottawa, so he's approaching, Dr. Bullinger's approaching from a, a Christian even though Gentile, Englishman, or European, uh, or Anglo-American, I think, um, but even though he's approaching from, he's looking for truth. So it's, it's not a so-called so -called racial thing or a national thing, especially when, when, when one comes into their, their, their birthright again. So in the, in, when we come into our birthright, we, we now come into nationality on the level of nationality. And, and these, this is very, very important. Now, even though that's a, a, governmental, a governmental teaching, which means a kingdom teaching, and we don't go into the kingdom teaching, but I just want to point out the interrelationship. You know, as long as we go around as NBCs, Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds, you know what I'm saying, which, are, which have nothing to do with nationality. It has nothing to do with um, it's like a negative status, you understand? Know and we're the only people that are in such, the only people in the whole world who are in such a negative status who have um, foreign or alien names, you understand, know superimposed on them. And then when you get into the whole um, corporate name, artificial person, so forth and so on, we are not in our proper person before law. That means in principle. So when we wonder, as black folks say, well, how come what, these things happen to black people? Well, what is a black people? Think about it for a moment. You understand? What is a black people? You understand? Black is, is not um, a nationality. You see what I'm saying? Black, now they say African American. You understand? But then we have to go beyond that to the very root, because they can't deny that link. So much um, martyrdom to get out that African or Afro consciousness to this lost people and to let them know um, point blankly that, 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 that many, the majority of those of us over here, we came through that way. Yes, our people were in America, our, I'm talking about Ethiopian people. Wherever water touches land, you will find Ethiopians there. And it's ancient historians that have left that testimony for us, and this is why we quote that. You know, then it was the Europeans who discovered a new world that they did not know. So much that we have and we receive, we receive through um, a foreign spectacles. That means we have to study it and when necessary and where necessary, reinterpret it and put it into its proper or its truthful context in order for it to really have the true application. So we say actualize here, do, but the process also leads to the application. You understand the application? We cannot apply, you understand, the covenant as our way of life, and this affects the, the, the whole mission of the society, of, of the Lion of Jews society on one level, but even greater than that, it affects the Ethiopian Hebrew diaspora, and in particular, they elect the Rastafari. You understand? I mean, everything hinges on that. You see, we wonder, like, well, what's going on? Like, what time is it? What sign was that? But really, we are the sign. 
You see, it, it, it's really about what we do, you understand? Know and if we don't do, you understand, know if we stay in a state of inertia, you know, like willing, willful inertia after hearing the call, you see, if the trumpet blows and, and the trumpet is clear and, and the word is becoming very, very clear, so I think it's becoming clear to even the so-called deadest of the so-called lost sheep. You hear them saying some things and you be like, you, you think for a moment, did they just turn conscious? They, they, they're not really conscious, but, you, you know, the truth is the truth is the truth is the truth. You understand? Sometimes that just breaks across everything else and it comes out. You understand? I mean, even the devil or the enemy, the adversary knows the truth. You understand? And and and, and knows the true God and and submits himself to the true God. See, it's really about what we do. You see, we have to recognize that the enemy is a particular a particular test for I and I. But this word right here. And this is the opening of the mouth. This is what I wanted to say about this right here. This is, this is part of, on a certain level, coming out of, 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 of Egypt. This will be the opening of the mouth. Pe, pe or af is the mouth. Pe is the mouth, right? Af is the mouth. So he says right here in verse 130, the entrance of thy words giveth light. The entrance of his words, of Yah's words, of Jah's words, they give illumination. They giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. It gives an overstanding to the simple. So let's go here, Bamarinya, and let's just hear this right here. This is Fay, and, and Fay is uh, Pe or Pe. There, um, that's my world of Memphis Kedusa, how do I unlock it? It says, Yekale Fitchi Yabberal. Yabberal. Yek alih fitchi yaberal. Hit anatinima asa toayoch yadergal. This is interesting. Because here it says your word fitchi. Fitchi is interesting because fitchi, bamarinya, would be like an interpretation. You understand? Know Almost to say an explanation or an interpretation when it says fitchi. Let's go right here. And, and and begin to get into the invitation. You see, because when we when we when we get to chapter eleven, eleven and twenty eight, where we find the great invitation. When when we get to this particular chapter, you have to remember that ten chapters already preceded it. And and, and we're speaking um New Testament. Lift up, let's see if we can just lift up. Um, and so we're talking um yeah, we're talking New Testament there, right? New Testament. At the beginning of the so the beginning of the the New Testament. So we have um I see you see the Scofield has a good section between the Old Testament and the New Testament that gives um some of the uh, a summary of what happened to the Beit Israel and cuz Israel already was was scattered all over the place. You understand? But there was uh, a renewed kingdom of David that was in the highlands of Ethiopia. You understand? The kingdom of David. And this now comes from the, the, the Solomon and Sheba and the thousand from each of the twelve tribes of Israel, of the firstborn sons that accompanied um, Bainalehem or, or, or Dagmawi Dawit, David the second. You know what I'm saying? Where he renewed, where David had a son named Solomon, Solomon had a son named David, and he renewed the kingdom of David in Ethiopia. And we have the prophetic word of uh, Psalm 68, verse 31, where it says, Princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. Now, we know that Ethiopia has what's called Tabod Christina. Really what Ethiopia has is Yehuda Christina, or a Judaic, a, a true and a ancient, the, the ancient um, um, ear of that Davidic Solomonic kingdom. And the reason why many in the world reject that has to do with the lies of the adversary. And on a certain level, yes, it's, it's, it's racial. 
because because the race, the word race means seed. The word race means seed biblically. So when we understand that from a scriptural context, race means seed. So now what we're, what we're touching on right here, where's, where's the marker? What we're touching on right here, right, what we're touching on right here in this portion is Psalm, right, is Psalm 1, here we go, is Psalm 1, Thy word. Let's deal with Jah word. This is this is going to be leading into discipleship. Um, Jah word and the opening of the mouth. Right. So we have right Jah word. Right. And the opening of the mouth. Now in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, this is known as um, as uh, feh, right? This is known as somewhat like this. It's known as feh, right? Feh or peh. They'll say peh, right? Peh. Now, you have, Bamarinya, you have af, and we call it, we call it uh, feh, right? It'll be like, Fay, right? Fay. So we have this means mouth, right? This means mouth, right? Now notice that when we saw the Hebrew letter, there's there's a there's a there's a received wisdom. You see, there's a received wisdom and and the an overstanding and and here's where proverbs becomes a foundation. The teaching in Proverbs really needs to be studied. This is what we're talking about, a, a curriculum. It, it is a little bit challenging to um, set a any kind of an absolute curriculum, but what we've been learning from studying the Word and in this communication and reasoning and building with brothers and sisters, we're beginning to see a basic template, and this is what we want to demonstrate right here, dealing with the great invitation. And so we begin off with this particular word from Psalm 119, verse 130, where it says, it says, the entrance of thy words. Now, King James says words, but really it should be thy words, singular. So in your Bibles, Psalm 119, verse 130, you'll see thy words. It really should be thy word. Thy word, thy male word, giveth light. Now let's deal with that, um, that A part of the verse or the ha part of the verse. Here it says, Yek'alihe fitchi yabara. Yek'alihe fitchi. Of your word, the interpretation, almost to say like a key. It's almost like a key in that sense. The interpretation of your male word, yabaral. It is illuminating. It is illuminating. You understand? It is illuminating. So it says, yeah, ale, se, chi, right? Ya be ra le, right? It says ye kalihe fitchi. This is a key word, this word fitchi. Fitchi. Fitchi is, is to say like a, a type of interpretation that almost like a clue. It's almost like the clue or a hint, but it, 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 it more translates to like a, a kind of interpretation or interpreting of that of that particular word. Some might say on a mystical level, but it has to be in tune with the principles and according to the process, you understand, and therefore actualizable. So if it's prophetic, right, if it's prophetic, then it has to be according to the principle of that word, you understand, the principle of that word of, 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 of how that describes the process and either actualizable, that means it's in tune with the giver, you know, so Yah is the one who 
sends the word. This is how when he says you could tell a true prophet from a false prophet. Because a false prophet might say everything's going to be all right, everything's going to be wonderful. You understand? There's no problem. This has happened even in the Bible when ones like Jeremiah was trying to tell them, listen, things are things are, are, are getting bad, and they were saying to Jeremiah, like, you're just making things bad. You know, you're just making everybody feel sad and everything. We want everybody to feel happy. This is a kind of escapism. You understand? Escapism, and it even gets into a, a kind of a spiritualizing of things where it gets in, on, a, on a level of unconscious escapism because you're running away from the principle, you understand, of what it is that you say you are, you understand, or what it is that you are declaring, you understand, you are. So if we are declaring ourselves as, as Hebrews, that, that's first of all racially speaking. So when they say blacks or whites or whatever, we are Hebrews, you understand, as a race. You see what I'm saying? We are Hebrews. As a nationality, we are Ethiopians. So therefore, we can say we are Ethiopian Hebrews. And this is not a new thing that I, in a Rasia Dinos Teferi, you know, is making up. This is something that goes, goes in our history to the 1920s and 30s, and we have... Um, Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthews of the Commandment Keepers Congregation, you know, was in one of the first black Jew, you know, saying black Jewish congregations to really rise up and, and really uh, sh shine that light, you know, saying that now has borne fruit in, in various different, I want to say offshoots, but, but, but branches from that original word and seed and manifestation. And we and I say hallelujah. But what many of them have neglected is the true Ethiopia and, and, and divine monarchy focus that those ancestors, you know what I'm saying, those true and righteous forefathers like Rabbi Matthews and and, and, and Rabbi Arnold Josiah, Josiah Ford. You understand, and Reverend James Morris Webb. I mean, we, we speak about Garvey, but Garvey, in a sense, becomes on a certain level a sideshow once we recognize that we are Ethiopians, Halas is our kinsman redeemer, and we, we recognize what the principles are, and we recognize also what the true process is in order for us to actualize. You see, that needs to go on first and foremost so that the kingdom or the governmental aspects can truly manifest. So when we're talking about federation, you understand, some say, oh, well, we're just dealing with religion or we're dealing with, you know, Bible, so forth and so on. Some of I and I so-called own Rastafari so-called brothers, they, you know, they kind of play down what this message of the I brother is and, and what it is that we're saying because it's like what Christ says, you don't hear my word. And why they don't hear that word? Because they're not of this of this people. You understand? They're not truly. They may say they are. Even the Bible says there's many who say they're Israelites. You know what I'm saying? But they're not Israelites. You understand? They're not true spiritual. They're not part of that spiritual seed so they can hear the spirit of the word. And there's no response to that. And a little bit of that we, we're going to deal with in the parables because as we touched on before, there are four different kinds of responses. Let's, uh, let's start to get into some of the teaching right here on this um, because it says it giveth understanding to the simple. Let's just deal with that part. Um, it says, uh, and to children or infants, astoayoch, you understand that means intelligence, Yadargal, intelligent ones, astawayoch, intelligent ones, yadargal, that it makes even the hitanat, the hitanat is, is, is to say like an infant, because you have the hitan, the infant, you have the lij, or one would say legit or legit, like for, to say daughter or sait lij, some would say, but you have the lij, the child, and then you have like the golmasa, um, I think there was a Korada, um, uh, and a Jaji, you know, there the are levels of, of what ones will call the adolescents, 
phase, and then they become man or or a full mature adult. So it's saying here, n not just like King James says, um, the simple, the simple, right? According to the King of Kings, Metaf Kedus the Mesmor Dawit, that simple is the Hitan. So when Christ says, "Be as what." Be as little children. It will be the little children that Christ speaks about. So you're not even a child, but you're a little children, a little child. It's like a little infant. Now, this connects with the whole schoolmaster teaching that Huari Apollo spoke of. He said the law is a what? A schoolmaster uh, until, until Christ, in that sense, be formed in us, until we come to that um, um, a maturity. You understand? So there are, there are, there are, not to say just grades, but there are certain degrees. There are certain steps, stages. You know, I'm going to touch on some of those, those, those particular stages. So I, I lay that out in this discipleship introduction to the teaching on the, on the, 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 the great invitation, because it's very important for you to understand these things. But since I'm already on this point, let's just talk on for a moment, the misale, the parables. Now, the parables, the misale, right? The misale, let's, let's get this right here. The misale, we have what's called the misale. And let's write this out. Misale, right? Lay, right? The misale are the parables. Now, this word parable, we have parable, right? We have parable. What's another word for parable? Well, so, ironically, but interestingly, proverb, right? A parable, a proverb, you have a simile or a likeness. You understand? Like, well, this is like such and such. That's making like a type of a parable or a proverb, especially if it's like a story, too, a symbolical type story, but it's also this word here. It's also myth. Before 1700 and something, 17, I'll get the exact date, the Europeans, they changed the meaning, the, the writers and the intellectuals, they changed the meaning of myth to be um, fiction. So this idea now when people talk about myths that it's not real or fictional to disregard it, or oh, those were ancient foolish people, we're so much wiser, and we see that this present um, humanity and population is on the verge of destroying their own so-called ecosystem and ecosystem, much less what they have been doing to themselves on the spiritual and the psychical and emotional level on the physical level. You know, so how can we say we are much wiser than them? You see, that's the foolish worldly way right there. But as we start to study this, we'll see why this word myth is very important to keep in context with this word misale. Now, misale in the Hebrew, right, misale in the Hebrew is known as mishle in, in, the, in the Masoretic, Hebrew as Mishle. So we have Misale, Mishle. So we can see the Afro Shemitic, since I'm speaking Amorinya or Amharic when I say Misale and Ethiopic or Gutters when I say Misale. And then when you look at the Hebrew, the Masoretic Hebrew, it says Mishle. So you can tell from the ear that there's something very similar. This is why we say and remind ones. Um, Ethiopic, Amharic, or Afro-Shemitic language. Even Hebrew is an Afro-Shemitic language, linguistically speaking. And this is not a point to say, yes, yeah, Afro, black, uh, no, but this should be an invitation, in a sense, to find out what other hidden gems, what, 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 what um, clues, fitchy, you know, saying what clues or keys or interpretation we can find because it all comes to his word. You see, the word, Jah word and Jahoshua's word or the one you call Jesus, Jesus Christos word. So the parables, they teach that there would be 
four different responses. I want you to get this. Brothers and sisters, get this. There are four different types of responses to the word. Now, we're, we're referring to the first, the very first parable, Matthew chapter 13, verses 18 to 23. Write that down and go and check, check it out later on. We're not going to go through, through, the, through the chapter right now because we want to still touch on the great invitation. But I want you to understand this since we got into this aspect, you understand, and this is based on this right here is uh, Psalm, right, Psalm 119, and we was at verse 130. You understand when we say um, it's the, the Hebraic, it's likened to the Hebraic opening of the mouth. Now, in ancient Egypt or Kam, good, there was what they know as the opening of the mouth ceremony. It's like when the word in the Bible says, open thy mouth and I will fill it. You understand it says that it says that with um um faith let's go with, let's go to this right here. These are some keystone verses from the scripture. Um Romans ten ten. Go to Romans ten ten to see a connection with this opening of the mouth. Ten ten it says, For with the heart man believeth. Now in the previous portion we touch on belief and how it really means to trust or to to, to accept or to admit, you understand, as, 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 as being true or to have confidence in it, but with the heart or the conscience, right, um, man admitteth to righteousness, or King James says believeth or momeneth to righteousness, to being in right standing. That means being with, within the contract, living in the contract, living in the covenant. You see, because if we say we are, we are um, people whom the Almighty has spoken a word concerning and we recognize our true identity as the once lost but now found black sheep of the Beta Israel, then we also have to recognize there is a covenant. And the reason why we got in this situation, nationally speaking, as a people, as a lost sheep, Ethiopian Hebrews, and so-called Negroes, Blacks, and Colored Smiths, Jones, and Johnson, is because we turned our backs on living in the contract, living in the covenant. You see, we try, and therefore we lost our nationality. We lost, well, we lost the kingdom first. Because remember, the Israelites were asking in 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 um, Acts chapter one, "Will now you restore the kingdom?" So they still had some national awareness. But we will see that matters actually got much worse historically speaking, and even to the point of so-called slavery or the transatlantic, trans-Ethiopic ocean slave trade here in the West, in the Americas, right? So here in 10.10 it says, it says, for with the heart man admitteth, or my man has amen to righteousness, and with the mouth confession, with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. Now, some interpret Romans 10.10 10 to, to just mean that, well, confession will, like what you see go on in certain churches, one just almost like, um, 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 oh, oh, Father, I have sinned, I have sinned, you know, on a certain level. Like just, that's not the only kind of so-called confession. It's, it's about what, what word do you speak? So that means we have to begin to become conscious of the word, not just the biblical and scriptural word, but of word in principle. You see what I'm saying? Word in principle, even seeking to become more precise, because Christ says there's a destiny in words. There is a de the divine destiny in words. The, the Bible says the power of life, you know what I'm saying, and death is within the tongue. You understand? James speaks about that if, if one were able to bridle their tongue, you understand, they could bridle their whole body. 
He's speaking some real high metaphysical, we could say that's the true Kabbalistic, you understand, know teaching of Christ when when James Yaakov speaks about that in James Epistle about if one was able to, you understand, know they'd be able to bridle like the whole, you know, like like, like body, you, you know, and um understanding what he means that Part of the reason why this world and, and everything is the way it is is because of word. You know, for example, people make an agreement and say, yeah, we're going to do such and such, and then they break agreement. They make a truce. They go against that. They say they're going to do this, and then they do that, you understand? Or they, they, they say one thing and they do the next thing. And so that cause, that's what's causing these instabilities and inharmonies because we are within a living reality. You understand that is built on that word. You understand on His word. You, you have to understand the significance of His word. That 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 the heavens and the worlds were framed by His word. You understand. So so and we now as human beings have access to that that um. That 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 key that link that um is the word. You, you, you know what I'm saying? We have access to that, and not just to speak it, but to meditate on it, to 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 see it as vision. It's 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 the it's like the operating so the true operating software because man for the last six thousand years, you understand, and and even over the last couple of hundred years. With his technology and so forth and so on, his 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 his, his um like uh, what is it? His blasphemy has gone to heaven because now they got satellites up there. So think about all the type of communication that takes place with word. You understand? With word, not the program word, but also that too. But moreover, with word, and that's going out into outer space. You understand? Know and word has resonance. You know what I'm saying? And and we a lot we don't understand even about the word. And and certain scientists and others are beginning to discover little shadow you know, like little shadow knowledge here and there. But even that's interesting because it just demonstrates to many of us the the, the veritas or the or, or the verity, the truth of what we admit. You understand? Know of what anomenal and of what I and I admit as being as being true. So here, Matthew thirteen, eighteen to twenty three, there are four different responses or types of responses to the word. And when we compare this with um Matthew chapter eleven verses twenty eight to thirty, the great invitation, and we become familiar with Everything from chapter one up to where we're at. That means that means think of r roughly like when you go to high school. You, you didn't say what is the twelfth? Is the twelfth, thirteenth, or so grade something like that? You know, saying this is almost like the high school level. He's about to go into the 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 the, the parables. You know, saying and he calls the parables the mysteries. You know, saying he calls. Christ calls the parables in Matthew chapter 13 the mysteries. But before we get to chapter 13, there is, there is about 12 chapters that form the foundation, certain principles, you understand? And the process, we see some of the process there, but Hawadi Apollos and the other um, um, apostles, they help to, but especially the Gnostic Hawaii uh, Paulos, Paul, helps to reveal the process. Because remember, wisdom was given, you understand, to Hawaii Paulos. And when you understand the writings of Paul, see, Paul's writings, because they are um, both very good um, um, r literature, you know, the writings of Paul, if you were to read it in the original languages or the more original, whether the Greek, you understand, or especially the, the, the Royal Amharic, you understand, or the Hebrew, if you have to, even the English, 
a good translation of the English and really understand what he's saying, Paul is explain, explaining a lot of the procedures or the process, while in the gospel we have the word as a foundation, and we have that knowledge, you know, and that faith and that knowledge, you know, and, and Christ is that wisdom. You see what I'm saying? He himself is that. He's like the, the actualization of what we call Bamarinya in the Amharic. He is the Imare. Imare is a mystical Amharic and Ethiopic word that means a demonstration. So Christ now, he becomes that demonstration. So he's teaching. You know what I'm saying? He's teaching these principles. He's, he, he, he's, he's explaining. He's correcting. He, he's, he's deepening, highlighting, and enlightening the word, you know what I'm saying, of his father. But he's laying down some, some core curriculum. Even in the 12 chapters, uh, 11, even at chapter 11 where we're at right now, and the 12 chapters before we get to chapter 13, there are some very um, important principles that Yeshua teaches and give a red letter Bible, that's, that's it in the red. And these have to become our meditations. You know what I'm Have to be our meditations. And one, ones will have to also learn what is meditation. You know what I'm saying? What is meditation? Because the Bible even says so. Joshua 1 and 8 speaks on meditation. Right, and then we have in Timothy. Is it Timothy one one and four? Timothy, I think Timothy one and four also speaks on meditate. Well, we're commanded to meditate. Now it's interesting because whenever you see the word um, meditate and the context of meditate, it's always and usually connected. Here it says in 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 First Timothy four and fourteen. 4 and 15, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly, that means completely or holistically, to them that thy profiting may appear to all. So this, this reinforces what we're saying about the imari or the demonstration. You know what I'm saying? But don't be so, like sometimes we get eager to prove something to somebody else. You, you know, to prove something to somebody else or, or to, to make someone believe. And it'd be better to learn how to pray and to pray for them, but for one to grow themselves. You understand? And to grow up yourself and, and and to and to really seek to actualize and to and to gain in your conscience, you understand, with knowing, you understand, and then through the actualization, processing it, that's what a wisdom now, as one is able to actualize it in the context, in the spirit and the truth of the word, that's where the wisdom and the overstanding begins to ma manifest. Then if one is willing, you understand, if one comes to you or one is willing, you can then help to guide them because you will know the way. You see what I'm saying? That you, but how can you guide them in the way if you're just learning the way? You know, like we're going to some far-off place, and there's a couple of different highways that we have to go on, but you only know the first highway. But then you said, I, well, I know the first highway, the first, like, the one-tenth of the way there. And after that, you don't have any, any more instruction. But you're telling me that you know the way. Come on, let's get in the car. We go. And so, okay, what's the next road we go on to? Where do we turn? I don't know. And you're looking around. Come on. You see, and a lot of that has already gone on, and, 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 and the time, you know, it says redeem the time because the days are kuful, the days are evil. And if the days are evil, we must know that there will be a judgment. They're, they're, they're going to be con People can ignore Jah. They can ignore the word. They can ignore Rastafari revelation. You, you, but they cannot ignore the consequences of their ignorance when they start to see, you understand, and know what we were saying was right and exact. You understand? And they either willingly or unwillingly was ignorant. But it says to us, meditate upon these things and give thyself wholly to them 
that thy profiting may appear to all. That that our profit, not speaking about the person profit, a news bearer profit, no, that one's benefiting. You understand know that one's benefiting or beneficialness can appear to all. You know, like it says, as far as we're supposed to do charity. But think about it. We, we look at ourselves and we say, wow, we're so poor. But what does Revelation say? But you are rich. You see, but we are rich. But we're in a state of amnesia. Now, for those of us who are waking up, you understand, those who are interested in this teaching and discipleship teaching and really seeking to study so they can apply these things are those who are waking up. Something tells you it's like an alarm clock has, has rung. Something tells you that these sort of teachings are very important. You understand? And therefore, you understand? Therefore, let us get into it. So there are four different kinds of responses. You got this right here? Even though I like to keep this on the, you know, I like to keep this here. We got to move. We got to keep this moving right here. So I want to touch on these four different kinds of, of, um, Responses. Now take it down, and we'll come back into the four different kinds of responses. Suffice it to say, this is just an, an introduction to Jah Word and the Hebraic, or we say the Ethio Hebraic um, opening of, of the mouth. You understand? It begins with the Word. You understand? It begins with the Word. Now the next level we want to touch on is the Misale, the Mishle, which are the parables, the proverbs, or what one may call in a modern parlance, the myth, but in Matthew 13, Yeshua, our master, calls it the mysteries. You understand? The mysteries. The, the, these mysteries are given in, in parabolic logic, but to the disciples, it was given to them to know. So that's the difference. So we have to know what this parable really means. You understand? So this is a part of our discipleship. This is, in a sense, it's like also the test of discipleship. You know, it's test your knowledge. Know thyself. Get into your proper persons. 